Subtle skills, big results. Welcome to the Ninja Selling Podcast. Welcome back to the Ninja Selling Podcast. I am Rob. He is Peter. You're Rob and I'm Peter. It's the 9th of September, 2024. We are three weeks into the new normal, right? And Peter, there's been a whole lot of discussion over the last few weeks and leading up to that. But tell me with an ear to the street, what have you heard? It's a gamut from this is almost like Y2K, gigantic ado about nothing, all the way to, oh, no, this is somewhat cataclysmic and agents really trying to figure out where do we position ourselves with sellers? Where do we position ourselves? Uh, somebody the other day was saying, you know, it is our fiduciary to make sure that we protect our sellers and we can't be offering compensation because that puts them at risk all the way to, well, my seller just offered it. So is that okay? And I think that like every pretty massive structural change, we're trying to find our way, but there is one thing that remains common. People want to buy and sell houses. Yeah. The change is driving things that don't really have anything to do with paperwork or lawsuit settlements or anything. There's still change in people's lives all the time. And this is a classic example of getting, getting in an e echo chamber. I mean, it has been so noisy within the industry, not with the customers. A very few have been reading about the lawsuits. They ask tangential questions. But man, if you looked at it just from the industry perspective, you would think that the alien spaceships have been on the way, ready to destroy the earth for the last two months. And the fact of the matter is that isn't what's been happening, happening external to the industry. And there's a little bit of so what now what, right? Yeah. To where uh, this magical date came and went. We've emerged on the other side. Some people still had closing. Some people still have no business in their pipeline. But Peter, with where we are right now, there's two things I'm hearing, and I'm going to ask you to address both of them. Number one, how do I finish 2024 strong? And how do I set myself up for success in 2025? So let's start with finishing strong. There's this sort of now piece to this, right? So now what? And what can we be doing now? What's coming up for you and what are you hearing is working for people? I have always heard for the last 20 years, we've got to get back to the basics. But when you ask somebody, what are the basics? The answers vary. I mean, it's a gigantic variation. So I think we should talk about what are the basics from the perspective of a ninja, because I think that's really what we can do now, this, this minute. Let's go and do what we know has worked through a great recession, through, well, through 20 years of things. And just to be really redundant, the Ninja 9 works. We know that it works. But what we also know is that very few people are truly familiar with, well, maybe put it differently, have truly mastered the Ninja 9. If you ask most ninjas to tell me real quickly, rattle off the Ninja 9, they'll go, well, gratitudes. Mm-hmm. I write some notes. Yeah, I wrote a couple of notes. Uh, I really like writing notes. And you go, and what else? And they go, oh, yeah. Um, uh, Probably hot list, warm list. They can come up with that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot that. And then real estate reviews, I'm pretty mm. sure. Yeah. Yeah. They're in there. But it, it, it isn't, it, they don't own it. Yes. And I think right now there is a, a pressure to up our familiarity to mastery. Why? Because you don't have 7,000 transactions going on. You don't have 6,000 transactions. And so all of our scarcity mentality can be triggered right now because there, there are less transactions. So how do you thrive in a lower transaction environment? There you now. go. And is the short answer to your long answer the Ninja 9? Well, you know our joke is answer any question that is ever asked, like how do I get from Fort Collins to Denver? The Ninja Nine. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, Larry always talks about how the Ninja Nine is the driver of business. It is what generates business. And I think of the irony there, Peter, where there are so many people that went to hours of training and they spent time practicing how to fill out buyer agency agreements, but they don't have any buyers. Right. Right. So, so there's really two pieces to this business. Walk us through both of those pieces and let's put a focus on the first part. 
I used to say for the first 25 years of my business, there's only two difficult things about the real estate business, having people mad at you and having no business. And my supplemental joke to that, the best way to make sure that nobody's mad at you is to have no business. Right. And so really the only difficult thing is getting business. Almost everybody I know in the business loves helping people. It's really satisfying. And when you have a Uh, a first time buyer cry at closing or get out from a mortgage or all the change that's happening, almost everybody who makes it in the business finds deep satisfaction in that. So it really just just boils down to the problem of generating business. And everything we were taught in sales for 30 years was abhorrent. And it's what made people dislike sales. Oh, we have to prospect. And we all know when we're being prospected by another industry and it creeps us out. It does. It it does. So why does Ninja work? It's because we said, quit prospecting, Mm -hmm. quit selling, quit overcoming people, overcoming objections, quit closing people. People don't like it, but that takes a degree of skill and practice. And everybody goes, oh yeah, make Ford calls. But if you really dig down, for example, into making Ford calls, and we said right now, you know, the best thing you could do is call up people you haven't talked to in the last three or four or five or six months or even a year and have a Ford conversation with them. Most people would say, that's a great idea. I don't think I'll do it. Right. Because I don't think they know how. Yeah. And it sounds easy, but it takes some skill. So what do we do now? Increase our skill set. That's the number one thing we can do Go back to things that we know that work, but get really good at them, not okay at them. So the too long, didn't read version of this is there are two pieces to the business, generating the business and doing the business. It seems like right now, so much focus has been put on how we're going to do business that we have either stopped or never started generating business. And the Ninja business generation plan is Ninja 9. Well, and I think you're right. I think somewhere around May 1st, when all the lawsuit and the conversation and buyers saying it's perfectly distracting. Everybody has literally taken their eye off the, oh, if we don't have a buyer to a buyer's rep agreement, yeah. I think it's time for some bad English. Yeah. We don't got nothing, <laughs> yeah. you know? And so I think you're hundred percent right. So what do you do quickly to finish the year strong and to set up 2025? Start with your database. Start with the people that you know, start with the people. And and even if it's 20, here's what I keep thinking is that if I've been watching to the news from afar or listening to podcasts or listening to just the headlines, you know, we've been ripped off by the real estate industry for the last 20 years. And the podcasts were like, realtors are overpaid. That was for about three months. That's all I heard. If I have a realtor who is my realtor, the one I think of, my realtor calls up and says, Hey, I've been thinking about you. Have you heard anything about the lawsuits? And they go, yeah, are you okay? Mm-hmm. Right. That's how it's going to go. But I think we're really afraid of what do I say? Right. And so how do you practice when somebody says, well, are you okay? You've got to practice that. Yeah. It's a big question. Well, you know, the ninja selling system, whether you're a listener who is not even read the ninja selling book, you just stumbled upon the podcast and started listening or maybe you've attended 10 Ninja installations and have achieved perfection in the implementation of the systems in your business. I think everybody will universally agree that Ninja Selling is a complete operating system for a real estate business. Yes. And it encompasses the mindset with which we approach business, the lead generation, the marketing aspects of a relationship-based business, and then tactical strategies processes for how we work with buyers and how we work with sellers. Yep. We call it service, right? How we serve buyers and sellers. One of the things about the, the way that our business ninja selling has exposed organizations and people to the ninja selling system is through live training. We feel that live training is transformational. And one of the sort of the big conundrums of this is how do we do it at scale? Because our goal is not to make money teaching real estate classes. Our goal is to change the industry for the better. And we say we we focus on changing lives, changing careers. And if we change enough lives and enough careers, we will change the industry for the better. And so, Peter, you've taught 100 plus ninja installations. 224, but there you go. 224 ninja installations, might be 225 by the time this airs. 
you've heard all of the stuff about Ninja is at the installation a mile wide and an inch deep. And it seems to me like now is the time to go deep on certain pieces of that. What comes up for you when I say that? I've always thought about the installation that you have to be exposed to the whole system. And there's something, I don't think it's a, it's a rite of passage, but it's something like that. The first time you go to a Ninja installation, if you've not been to one and you're listening to this, it's a must experience in your real estate career. There's nothing like it. I've been in the business as of 45 years and I've seen a lot of training and there's just nothing like it. Then all of a sudden you go, wow, what do I do with this? Because it's probably more, it's deeper than a, than a foot, but it's really broad and it's really deep and it's really wonderful. It's a lot of material. It's a lot of material. And a lot of times you leave going, all right, where do I start? So Peter, I think what I just heard you say is that Ninja Selling has come up with a new two-day live course, in-person course called Ninja Now. Was that right? Well, I used about 6,000 words to say that. Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, now being important, what do we do? And you had started this, this conversation about what do we do to make the end of 2024 vibrant, alive again? And what do we do to set up 2025? And so what we decided is, wait a second, there are, I think, how many ninjas are there? We estimate there's about 100,000 that are still out there uh, in the business who have been through the ninja installation. Of us. Yeah, um, starting some, I remember somebody the other day said, oh, I came to a, uh, to a board breaking uh, a weekend. I've forgotten what they used to be called. A retreat. A retreat. A retreat. Here in Fort Collins, which was yeah. the, sort of the seminal, the beginning. So for anybody who's been exposed to Ninja, largely through a live event, who says, great, I want more, we created a two-day course. And I think it's appropriate to say it is not a refresher. It's a deeper dive into some of the tools, some of the wisdom that's in the, in the width of Ninja that we can use today. Got it. We talked about Ford calls, about how really to do that. And uh, we've, we've run two beta tests. And so far, we've had really great reviews, especially from people who are familiar with Ninja and were like, oh, man, I didn't realize what was here yeah. that I've been missing that they can literally use this afternoon yes. now. Yes. And um, in just a couple of weeks, we have our first Ninja Now um, that's being hosted by Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, Colorado Real Estate yeah. in Denver. And uh, Peter will be teaching that. To kind of put a bow on this conversation, if you stop and you say, we got distracted as an industry. I mean, if you really go back, let's go back to the pandemic. The first distraction was the pandemic because we went along from like 2012 to 2019 pretty quote unquote normal bumping along, bumping along pretty well, people making a living and, you know, having a pretty knew what to expect. Then the pandemic blew everything up at a level we never could have imagined, including the highest level of unemployment concurrent with the highest level of transactions who would have ever thought. And then we had the precipitous fall from 7 million national transactions down to 4 million last year. And then let's just pile on with a whole new way of doing business explaining to the first time how to get paid with half of the buying public, it's a big shift, right? And both of those things are incredibly distracting. And so as an industry, we, I think, lost touch with how to generate business. Yeah. And I think I said it earlier, whatever the basics are in Ninja, how to maintain relationships through turbulence when you have to generate business through loving on your people. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. So Peter, this episode is not an advertisement for Ninja Now, right? We will certainly get more information out there, but Ninja Now is a new course from Ninja Selling. It's two days long. Day one is dedicated entirely to the concepts of generating business. And day two is dedicated to the actions needed in doing business today. So you've got some skill set and some action stuff. There's definitely some mindset tied into both days because probably more important than ever. But what I'd like for you to do is give us a glimpse into Ninja now. And let's use the Ford calls that you just mentioned as an example, right? Maybe for seven or 12 minutes in the Ninja installation, we talk about the concept of Ford calls, right? That if there was a summary to be given from what somebody might learn in the installation, it's that before you launch into the purpose of your call, if it's a business-related call, 
why not warm it up with some conversations about what are you doing this weekend? How's the family doing? How's soccer this season? Yeah, what have you that been doing for fun lately? Yes. What do you have planned that you're excited about in the future? So what does a deep dive into Ford calls look like? I think the first thing that we make an assumption and the installation that if you hear it once, you understand it. Now, I know enough about affirmations not to say things like this, but I'm going to say it here because sometimes I think I'm a slow learner. I have to hear things two or three or four times. And more importantly, I have to practice them. And then the first time that I practice them, they, they aren't great. Uh, the, my best analogy is how many people do you know that say I'm a terrible joke teller? Well, to tell a joke, you have to learn how to tell the joke. You have to, you have to remember the cadence of it, the punchlines. There are punchlines that lead to the punchlines. And if you stumble or you move too fast, then you can't tell the joke. It isn't that you're a terrible joke teller. You just haven't practiced it. And so I think being really good at Ford calls takes a lot of practice. So one of the things we're going to do is, is dissect what really are the, are the behavioral elements to picking up the phone and talking to somebody you haven't talked to six months ago when you feel guilty, you feel nervous, you're projecting on them that, oh my gosh, what do they want from me? Mm -hmm. And even if they say, oh, why are you calling? Yeah, I haven't heard from you in a while. Yeah, one of those. And so you don't panic and go, oh my gosh, I hate this Ford call idea. <laughs> Whose idea was this? Mm -hmm. and, and which I think are some of the impediments that have kept us from, as an industry, getting good and, and maintaining relationships. Yeah. I mean, it sounds so great in the installation, but the execution. And so really what Ninja Now is, let's take so many of those great concepts, for example, how to draw a funnel on the buyer's process that we blow through on day four. And it looks so great. And then you go, what, what, was, what, what was that funnel thing I was supposed to do? And no, we're going to learn how to do it because it is so critical, especially now when you're trying to articulate value. Yeah. And so I don't want to jump subjects. How can somebody tell that this isn't an ad for Ninja now? You're smiling. Well, it's funny because I wanted to, put this out here because a lot of times why this comes up for me is some people go, Peter, don't BS me. If I'm making a Ford call, I'm really prospecting. Sure. It's the same thing. And so for me, it's the intention. It's the intention. Of course, we want business. Of course, we want you to go, let's go to Ninja now. That would be disingenuous mm -hmm. if we said anything else. But I think the most important thing that at Ninja is can we even demonstrate value in this podcast so that if you don't go to Ninja now, you go, oh, I got something from it. Yeah, valid point. Yeah, and so this is our own kind of a, a monodirectional Ford call without talking to... It's interesting. I, I, I sit there like a deer in the headlights when you ask that question, but the reality is, is the intention is everything. I want people to leave this podcast with a nugget they could implement in their business or a note that says, hey, let's revisit this concept, or maybe I should practice that or something like that, as opposed to getting all lathered up and signing up for Ninja Now. Because sure, I would love Ninja Now to be as popular as it could be because it will genuinely help people. However, if that's something that's not available to you or something that you're not ready for right now, I still think we can add value in this call. And I think that's a very interesting point of Ford calls. Maybe they don't turn into a real estate transaction in that moment, but maybe you're able to help them with something else in their life. Yeah. And, and I think that is the, the, that is the real key. I, I always love it when people say, well, this isn't a pitch. Well, I think it really is a pitch. So just disclaiming that it isn't doesn't mean it is so. Yeah. And so I wanted to bring that up because if you're listening to it, this really is the perfect mirror of what we're trying to do when you call somebody up and somebody goes, well, why'd you call me? He said, well, because you crossed my mind, you know, and I've been thinking about you. How many of you today have thought about somebody during the day? Mm -hmm. I think it's universal. Mm -hmm. And one of our, our goals at Ninja is to say, pick up the phone when that happens. Yes. And you know what they're all going to say? This is so weird. So weird. I was thinking about you and too. And it happens just over, last night. Just last night. Yeah. yeah. And that's when we realize, oh, there's so many opportunities we've been missing. Not to worry about business, but to connect with people. Yeah. Because as we know, marketing creates awareness, relationships create business, flow creates relationships. Yes. yes. So 
So let's talk day two then. Buyer maybe, and seller process. Maybe the biggest buzzword in the industry right now has been articulate your value. Like it's a little cringy at this point. Um, and not to brag about Ninja, but I did have somebody say to me recently, everybody's talking about articulating your value and Ninja now actually shows you how to articulate your value, how to weave in the value into all the conversations that you're having, whether a in the context of, of doing a real estate transaction or preparing for that by Ford or whatever you know conversation you have leading up to the transaction itself. It's really interesting that they said, you're the only ones who have figured out what articulate your value means. And what it doesn't mean is posting a list of 180 things that you do in a real estate transaction on your Facebook. And I think everybody that understands the philosophy of Ninja will understand why that was a little bit cringy when it was happening. But tell us what the articulate your value is all about. First of all, showing is better than telling. So I have a, a pretty visceral response as a pretty diehard ninja with a tattoo that quit saying articulate your value. Let's demonstrate our value. Create value. How about that? Let's create value. The one that comes to mind that's so strong and finally, I think we've had a courage enough as an organization to say, you have to memorize this because if I'm meeting with a new buyer and I've just been referred to them and normally we've said, great, tell me, have you been pre-qualified yet? You know, um, bedrooms and baths, how many square foot do you have a price range, et cetera. Instead, memorizing our antidote to the four buyer's fears, which we say quickly, Rob, I have a process I'd love to share with you. By the way, has any agent yet given you a buyer's packet of information? Mm -hmm. Not yet. I have one here for you, uh, if nobody's given to you, but I have a process I'd love to share with you. And it's really designed to accomplish five things. First, to help you and your wife find the right house in the right time period for you. Number two, make sure you don't miss anything. Number three, make sure you don't fall in love with something and lose it. Number four, uh, make sure you understand how much you're going to have to pay to get the house you want. And number five, do everything we can to make sure you don't buy a house with a problem. How does that sound to you? A realtor with a process? A realtor with a process. Now, we've all been exposed, if you've been to Ninja, to a buyer's four greatest fears. But I don't think 5% of Ninjas can rattle them off. Yeah. And then what we're really getting to in Ninja now is how do we take this great knowledge and put it into instantaneously tactical technique, I guess all technique is tactical, to show rather than tell our value. Because just by asking those questions and telling them, um, has anybody given you? We've now shown value and we didn't have to do anything. Right. You created value. You didn't have to articulate it. It was evident. It was evident. Yeah. 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 And I think that we'll spend much of day two with like 20 of those little pieces where it's like, oh my gosh, this is not what I thought I was supposed to be doing. Yes. And I think that's that's really pretty exciting. And, you know, in, in Peter Parnick's favorite phrase in 2300 carefully chosen words, what it really comes down to as we started this conversation around what do ninjas need to be doing now, now being in the post settlement sort of frothy period around how do we fill out the forms and what's that going to look like? That's uncertain. But it's also something that you're going to forget about in six months. We'll get this piece dialed in, right? What does an engine need to be doing now to set themselves up for a great finish to 2024 and their best year ever in 2025? It seems like the answer to that is Ninja 9 and focus on creating value. Nurturing relationships. Yeah, I got it down to two, not 2,500. Look at that. Nurturing relationships by creating value. And I think this is a point we make, and this might be a really great sort of close on this. We, for 10 years, provided uh, the Go-Giver book and the five stratospheric laws of value. And number four is the law of authenticity, which most people misunderstood, uh, which meant be yourself. But the real, the, the, the actual language is the most valuable gift you have to offer is yourself. What that means is if I pick up the phone and I'm genuinely interested and say, Rob, how are you? Tell me about Ava right now. How's your daughter? What is she doing? What is she saying today that's funny? That is sufficient. And most of us 
don't believe that. We have to be offering something like, I don't know. But the truth is people really respond and appreciate when you call them up and- They really do. They really do. I mean, this stuff works. It does work. And uh, so anyway, so as long as we are going along not doing a commercial, if you see a Ninja Now, come. Yeah. So there is a Ninja Now that's going to be publicly available, taught by Larry Kendall in December, December 4th and 5th in Fort Collins, Colorado. Um, we have reached out to Ninja Brokerages. We're starting the process of working to plan Ninja Nows all over the country. So look for those coming. But it is one of those things, Peter, that a number of ninjas were were able to attend the sort of pre-launch classes that we had here. We don't practice on our customers, but we invited a select group of people that included some of our team, um, some of the people from the group real estate that's our, you know, our, our birthplace. And um, also some of our coaching clients were able to attend uh, early Ninja Nows. It was a incredible success. We retooled, we redesigned, we honed the course to the point that it meets the ninja standard, which is pretty darn high. And we are out there booking those classes now and people are hearing about it and they're asking us about it. What is Ninja now? And I thought, why not create an unapologetic value add with a little bit of advertisement in it? So people know what we're up to and uh, what opportunities we're bringing to you. Yeah, I think that I think that's perfect. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. And I personally look forward to seeing those people who are listening at an engine now. Yeah. Because there'll be reunions and it'll be like, oh my gosh, I haven't seen you in five years and seven years. And that's going to be really fun. That's right. Yeah. So how will you find them on our website? There's a course calendar. Click the filter to Ninja Now. You'll see that there's only a couple available right now, but uh, check back. They're coming. And uh, you, if you really want one, you'll probably be able to get a ticket to the class. You know, th we made an assumption here. What is our website? ninjaselling.com yep yep yes yeah click it right there rob it's always great to talk to you thank you so you much well. thank you peter bye if you enjoyed this episode visit us at the ninja selling podcast.com to learn more about ninja selling classes and coaching to get you started or further your journey on the ninja path thank you for joining us now go have an incredible day